Uh, hello, everyone. Today we will today we hear coming from Paphos, from Cyprus. Uh, my name is Pavel Mavrin. I'm from Algebraic Academy. I teach algorithms and data structures here in Paphos. And with me today is Pavel Konyavsky from Amsterdam office, and he works in the Kotlin team. Yep. Hello, Pavel. Hello, <laughs> Pavel. And today we'll discuss uh, programming competitions. So we both, me and Pavel, are uh, as competitive programmers, so we take part in programming competitions for many years. Uh, okay, more years than you, <laughs> for many years. So we are both, pro we are both ICPC, pro ICPC World Finance. Uh, I'm ICPC World Champion 2004, Pavel is ICPC World Champion 2014. Yep. So today we'll discuss uh, Kotlin Heroes, and this is a special uh, programming competition organized by JetBrains just to, to show you how to how to solve programming problems in Kotlin. And uh, we've had already nine episodes of these rounds. They hosted on Code Forces. And today we'll discuss the last one, the ninth round number nine, uh, which was held almost a year ago, I believe. Yeah. And, yes, long ago. Oh, long ago. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the plan is to discuss the problem from this round, how to solve it using using Kotlin. So, so the rule of the competition is that you only can use Kotlin to solve this problem. And like the main difference between me and Pavel is that Pavel actually knows <laughs> know how to how to how to program in Kotlin. So I I'm not uh, I have no main experience programming in Kotlin. I mainly uh, use C plus plus when I take part in competitions. Before C++, I used Java. Before C++, before Java, I used Pascal. So I, I basically never used Kotlin in my programming career. Uh, but, but again, in this case, I only allowed to use Kotlin. So I tried my best to solve the problem using Kotlin. Uh, the, uh, the, it's not uh, the rules of this competition are that you need to just solve the problems, not to write a good code. So my plan today is to ask Pavel how these problems are actually supposed to be solved using Kotlin. When you know how to do it. Let's also show that even if you write code as fast prototyping mode, let's call it that will not uh, so effective. You can using our technology tool convert it to something much more readable, even quite fast, and we can try to show it also how it works. Okay, uh, so we will discuss some problems. I'm not sure if we will have time to discuss all of them. So pick some problems from the last round and discuss their solution. Uh, in the first problem was very simple, I believe, first of all, called username. So usually in programming competitions, the first problem is the simplest one. So the first problem uh, is like this. You have uh, you have these, uh, how it's called, IDs. You have used some usernames. You have you, uh, you Mm, yeah, so so username you always can take some plus some number. You should have some string plus plus some number. And the question is to 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 uh, find the string and find the number. So we need to split this username basically into some string and some number. It, uh, you do it in such a way that this number is a correct number. So you split this uh, string into some string plus number. You like you can use plus one. Uh, so that, that's basically the whole problem. So you're given some string, and you need to split it into two parts. The first part is basically any any sequence of characters. The second part must be a correct number string. Correct number string means it, it contains only digits, and the first digit is not given. This is like the first, the first problem of the contest. And the way you solve it is basically you go from from the end of the string, and you you skip all the zeros like here, and you basically find the shortest suffix of the string, which is correct number. You go from the end, you skip all the zeros, find the first non-zero character from the end, and this suffix of the string is a correct number. So you can, you can pick this uh, suffix as a number and everything else as your uh, new string. That's, that, that's, a, that's the, the easy problem, that's which the, mostly used to okay well, we, we yeah. said that hmm? that's are not sounded really good hmm. and maybe you can go a bit closer me sure, sure. yeah sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> we'll, we'll try to figure out, we'll figure it out. We'll try to fix it on my end. Okay. So this problem is mostly not to provide a challenge, but to like some startup that can try to do something, if you can dig into this state where you break more edges complete. But let's discuss. So, so I think we will try, for, for all problems, we'll try to do two parts. We'll to, to try to discuss the Pavel solution from the competition itself. So it's maybe trying to involve some things. And also, I was not competing because I was already working at JetBrains at the point where this competition was held. Uh, and but I was a, a problem tester. That's why when you're organizing a competition, you often ask someone to write solutions just to test if everything correct. So this competition was organized by our Fortis friends, and I was the one who tested everything that it just worked. Uh, just can if we are not hearing both of us, or only Pavel, or only me? I believe both of us. That's good. Let's think go. uh, well, I think we wish we maybe wait a little till we fix the sound issues. Because if they don't hear us, then they can't hear us. Yeah, tell us if, if the no, if, if the sound's improving or not. By the way, um, uh, by, by, by the way, like if you want to ask us something not about the problems, but just to ask Pavel about something related to problems to related to our competition experience or to Kotlin language or to something else, feel free to say. Just feel free to to ask to ask some questions. I'm monitoring the chat. Okay, it looks like our audio quality is a bit improving now. Yes, you're sure about this? I'm not sure. Please, really. oh, please write us if it's if it's improving. Plus one. I'm not really yeah. sure. Plus, I, th I, th I think it will tell us when we have a good sound because it's yeah. I think the problem is they just know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they don't hear. It's hard to it. answer our questions if they don't hear it. It seems okay. to be better. Oh, okay. good, That's good, good, great. <clears throat> so, so like all over one again. <laughs> I was trying to say that if you have any questions to me or to Pavel about our competitive programming experience or about language language itself or about anything else feel free to ask i'm monitoring the chat and we'll try to go to the problem properly and explain well, uh, fastly uh, once again let's repeat once again i am pavel here is pavel i know very little about Kotlin. i don't know a lot about Kotlin. and today we will discuss some problems and learn how to solve them in Kotlin. Some problems from Kotlin. Uh, so the first problem is very simple. You have a string and the string contains some number in there. You need to extract this number and find everything else except this number. So you need to find the suffix of the string, which is a correct number. Correct number means it contains only digits and the first digit is not zero. Yeah, so this is the first problem. And if, if there are multiple answers, you can pick any of them. You need to pick any suffix of the string, which is correct string. Okay. Good. Better, better, better. 60 percent better. Anyway, let's say it's good enough. So if you can hear what I'm saying now, let's say it is good enough, and we'll try to upgrade it online. So let's go. Uh, so, so this is the first problem, very simple problem. And the uh, solution for this problem is we pick digits from from the end of the string until we pick pick the first non-zero digit. And then we, we cut everything starting from this digit to the end and say this is a correct number. I'm reading the question in the chat. Please. So the one of the question is that someone is used to do comparative programming in C++, but uh, 
but wants to try Kotlin and asking if there are any code snippets like there are in C++. I'm not really sure what do you mean by code snippets. I think we, we have uh, some, some examples of how to write simple problems on kotlinbank.org with like it's called something like competitive programming in Kotlin tips or maybe I hope our moderators would send some link in chat soon. I'm personally writing most Kotlin, most competitions in Kotlin right now and the code is often quite smaller but it requires that. Uh, okay, but what you're asking for? No, we don't have that single edge define in C++. Actually, I would not recommend do it even in C++. It, it doesn't save you much time. Like if, you, if the uh, the problematic for you to type of you know, of how much you type it, that you're know, doing something wrong in, comp in, in program competitions. Also, IDs have good have good outcompletions, so making pushbacks. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Your idea, like, if if you if you write it, I, in, uh, you, if you need to write the wrong identity, uh, it's called com common space, and it will just oh, okay. Okay. So that's kind of long yeah. long identifiers are not a big problem when you use ID. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. Okay, okay. That's that's the solution. Finally, not the solution. Okay, so first we'll discuss my solution for this problem. So, so again, the difference between so my solutions are solutions I created during the contest. Will be different when you when you're in actually competing and when you're testing the competition. So, so my my solutions are they, they, uh, I, I didn't try to, to produce some nice code. So I didn't I tried to produce the code. So, so, so. So this this code works best all the time. In time limit, that's the most important part of the competition. And let's now let's look at this code and try to prove it. Uh, so 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 here, this is the solution for the problem. So I, I read here here, I I, I read the input string, then find the last non-zero character from this string, and then just cut the substring from zero to this non-zero character. Oh, that's and it, it will cut ev everything before this first non-zero character from the end. Yes, and also, for example, if you're using ID, then you can show, if you're not sure about this, this, this line, so like, for example, for substring, it's, all, it's sometimes not a bit clear whether it would include last symbol or not. You can just ask for documentation right here. Can you please show it? Uh, not, and not, so you can just put your mouse over the, o o over the function and some documentation. And index is exclusive. Yeah. So, so that, 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 if that, you forgot something, it's right here. That, that's what I need basically. So I need to cut everything excluding this first non non zero character. Yeah. So, so this is this, this is the solution for the first problem. Actually, it's quite small. I think I don't think we can improve much here. So for example, basically one of most things you can improve here is to just use more of different standard library functions, which is quite rich in Kotlin compared to many available uh, okay uh, so for example one of the things you can do here is from for example a string and other sequences have such thing as last index mm -hmm. because for example because it's very common thing that we need to index like we have this length minus one so we have a shortcut standard library for that which is called not last index mm -hmm. so we can try using that and it's just like a small improvement which makes things nicer. And basically, I would say that's the only thing which can be improved right now. Also, maybe it, like the other small thing which probably should be improved, but not really important at competition, is that everything is var, which is not really an idiomatic way of writing in Kotlin. Uh, no. For example, if you remove of the first line don't yeah please, don't do like that <laughs> uh, okay, okay, in, again, in real again, world projects again I'm, so I'm, I'm not you, that used to Kotlin and it, I, I'm, yes. I'm during I'm, it, it, when I'm in Kotlin, I try to just minimize the time okay, so so and when you do this then ID shows you that probably you want it to be valid because it's unchangeable and actually from like when you get used to it I would say it's it's useful even in competitions because 
it protects you from accidental changes, which is quite useful. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yes, and I think my solution is not much different. I What's think it's different mostly solution? by using drop <clears throat> this drop last while function, which is a standard library function, which basically does what it's what its name says is drops last symbol while the condition passed past well, let's agree with condition past. So if we want to drop all last zeros, we can just do drop last while it's zero. So it's dropping last characters which satisfy this condition, right? Yes. Okay. But that does it work in linear time. Uh, you, yes. don't, you don't drop them one by one. Uh, yes, I think, it, I hope it should. <laughs> At least it probably wouldn't we pass. We can check. But if you are not really sure, you can yes, just, you, so you, you, can just check, you can always just check the implementation. Yes. Good. Which is also very nice. Uh, and I think, we, and by some reason, we need to drop one more symbol. You need to drop all zeros and one more character. So you okay. need to drop some correct number from there. Okay. So, but I wouldn't say it's <laughs> much different from what happened here. Okay. The, 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 I, I think the, the big difference is you you you're just using your symbol. You have only this here, and I use a lot of well, a lot of pre-written. You using yes, because I, I used to yes, that's, that's, that's I believe some uh, problems of programming of. Competitive programmers, so I, so I, I don't I, think it's really important. I tried to, to try to discuss. try to have a lot yeah. of stuff here, but there, but that over, overall code, yes, overall code is much, 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 much okay. similar. But and we have a question in yep. chat. Uh, it's probably for you. So, uh, so you was you, the, someone asked that you was giving some discussion of algorithms. Uh, I think with Alexander Kulikov, or with someone else, and <laughs> so someone liked your lecture about about segment tree and asking if you have plans to make more such lectures available uh you mean on code courses no i i i, I, I stopped recording videos so i recorded my full course about algorithms and data structures put it on youtube so you can go to youtube and see all all like 60 i believe lectures about uh algorithms and data structures and that's basically uh the whole i have at this point so when i when i get some more topics to discuss i think i will uh, probably Again, this is again. I, I recorded the full course and then stopped because I I had like. But but yes, we probably will get some. I probably will record some more about competitive programming topics. Like boom, boom, boom. Let's put the next problem. Okay. Uh, I hope our moderators would soon get a link to Pavel's YouTube channel, where you can check all his lectures. They are really amazing. I oh, totally okay. agree with the commenter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's like and subscribe, please. Uh, so, okay, uh, next, next, next problem. So let's move to the next problem. So, so first problem, very easy problem. Just go from the end and so, so, so. Second problem is a little bit more complicated. So the next problem, uh, okay, so it's lo long statement. I will explain just very soon. So uh, what, what we have in this problem, we have a sequence of pluses and minuses. Plus means that the person come to the, to, to the building. Minus means the person came out of the building. So we have this sequence of pluses and minuses, and we need to make it correct. Correct means uh, that uh, on every prefix, number of pre or number of people entering the building is not greater than number of people, people exiting the building. No, not okay. Number of people exiting the building shouldn't be greater than number of people entering the building, because initially building was empty. Uh, so basically, this statement is the same as uh, is you know is, is a correct bracket sequence. So if you know that when we open the bracket, when they close the bracket, number of cross closing brackets shouldn't be greater than number of opening brackets. So basically, we have the same situation here, but we have pluses and minuses. Let's skip a small, a small question. Well, for a more small question, like the uh, the commenter says that not all lectures you have was written was in, has English version. I think, as I remember, you had the full the full course. I tried I tried to record everything in English. If I missed something, please tell me. May, maybe. Yeah. So if you can sh show which videos are in English, <laughs> maybe something would happen eventually. Yeah. I really tried to record everything in English if possible. Yeah. Uh, so again, so 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 so, so again, uh, the problem is like this is, is to produce the correct sequence. The correct sequence is a sequence when for every prefix. Uh, like the sum is non-negative. So we have some pluses, we have some minuses. Every plus is like one person come to the building, minus is person came out of the building. And for every prefix, we need the number of person in the building be non-negative. 
Yeah. So again, yeah, it's, it's the same as the correct bracket sequence, basically. But we don't we don't check the final balance. But on, for every prefix, the balance should be non-negative. And the question if is, is if it was so we're given some string and we need to make it a correct string, uh, making it at most one swap of two characters. So we we can swap two characters uh, at most once, and we need to make the given string the correct sequence. Okay, as one of the commenters suggests that we can use a stack data structure, which is actually true. That's a, like a canonical way of checking this bracket sequences. Actually, here it's a bit simpler because we have only one type of bracket of braces. We don't need an actual stack. The only thing we need from it is its depth. So we can now use not stack data structure, but integer variable data structure, mm -hmm. which is a bit simpler. But in general, that's the correct way of doing that. Yeah. Let me write something. Let me just so. So we have if if you have sequence of pluses and minuses, uh, let's see, plus minus minus. So so for every prefix, you you maintain the balance balance here. Initial balance is zero. Then you have plus, you increase the balance. When you have minus, you decrease the balance, and so on. So you have one zero. If you have balance minus one, then you have invalid sequence. So you you don't allow to make the balance negative. Yep. So basically, how you check if your sequence is good or not? You go from left to right, maintain the balance. If your balance is negative, then you failed. Uh, but now the question is: uh, to if it is possible to swap two characters to make the bracket to to, to make the string a correct correct sequence. And this is a little bit more complicated task. So, so if if you are given a string, so so this string is, is is so this string is not correct because some some balances are negative, but we can make it correct by swapping two two characters. For example, if I swap these two characters, then I have everything the same. Here I have plus. Here I have minus, and now the balance is, is fine. So now the balance here is is one. Here it is zero, and now I have a correct sequence. And the question is if it's possible to swap two characters to, make, to, 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 to create a correct sequence. Actually, I think in this problem we are not required to have balance zero in the end. No, we don't which quite we, balance which, we're, we're, which we are required in the classical, make, in the classical like one, one more class problem. Yes, we, we, just, we, we just need to all, all, all the prefixes to be no, no negative. But this makes probably a bit simpler. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so how do you solve this problem? Basically, the, uh, it's easy to see that you only need to... So if, 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 you, look at, if you look at your string, uh, if it is not correct from the start, then the best thing you can do is to find the leftmost minus, no, no, leftmost minus, yes, and the rightmost plus, and swap these two characters. Yeah, and it is to see that, 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 that this is the best, the best you can do. So if this operation produces the correct string, then you, you're done. If it's not, then it is impossible to produce the correct string. Will we prove it? Well, <laughs> probably not. Okay, it's quite intuitive. Okay, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave it to you as an exercise. Okay, so so it's so it's, it's easy to see that any, any other operation can, can be measured by this. So, so this operation is better than any other operation you can make. Uh, so let's see. So so how 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 I do it in my code? Let's see. Uh, so what I'm doing here. So I have I, I have this function good that checks that the sequence is good. That's basically the same the same thing we we discussed. So I have this balance. I iterate over all things. If I have plus, I increase balance. If I have minus, I decrease balance. And I check if balance is non-negative. Okay, makes sense. Now here I check if my string is already correct. Then I just return one one. I did, no problem forced me to to do any operation. I just swap first character with itself. So it's just 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 an uh, empty operation basically. Uh, if it is not, then I find the leftmost minus. I find the rightmost plus. Mm -hmm. I check if they both exist and the plus is to the right from the minus. Oh, no, so, 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 yeah. If it is not, then it's possible. If it is, then I, I okay, okay, this is ugly. So, okay, <laughs> I, I agree, this string is ugly. So what I'm doing, I, I, I try to swap two characters plus and minus, but since strings in, in Java are immutable and same is in Kotlin. It makes sense to make strings immutable, I agree, but okay, it's not very comfortable here. So I take the substring before x, then structs before x and y, and just swap this plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then check if, if I obtain the good string. If I obtain the good string, then I, I return the separation. If not, I return minus one, so it's impossible. Okay, now let's try to check what we can improve here. 
Uh, first of all, this printing array is a bit suspicious. I even a bit surprised. I'm even a bit surprised it works. I, oh, okay, it's, it's not. I, I it's believe, not a top level print one, but some your print. I, I, I believe I. Okay, yes, I believe your print. My print one. Yes. Okay, let's make okay. some sense. This is smart shortcuts. Okay. Uh, I, so what, what, what's like, the correct way to do it? I think please do not have a write standard library function. <laughs> this would not work in the ways you expect. <laughs> I think the most canonical way is just using string interpolation here. So the one you can do is just write it like that. So. This yeah, it's yeah. it's unit dollar symbol dollar and then yeah. x plus one I think. yeah can I just like both yeah so you can ju just do like that and you can write almost any expression you need so I think that's the easiest way of doing it and it's okay not not yeah because that's a bit suspicious uh, actually I think it's mostly fine I wouldn't say it's can be changed much. For, for example, the one thing you can do is, as you said, strings are immutable. That's mm -hmm. uncomfortable for your problem. So you can not use strings, but you'd use a char array to a char array instead. Uh, char array. I'm not sure about the, the commenter suggests to use to string. I'm not sure to, I mean, string, to string on what. I think here. Uh, you don't need to string if you do something inside string interpolation, to string is automatically called. Uh, the, the problem is I need to output two, two integers in, in a single line, so it, uh, yeah. there is no such print one because... No, you can do it x plus one to string plus yes, space plus... But uh, that's yeah, even, yeah. even worse. Oh, they, 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 well, well, okay, no one except competitive programmers need to output space separated integers. Sorry, we don't have this function in standard library because no one needs it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, but okay. in general, also, I think we can improve a good function, but let's discuss it using my code because it's well, let, just let, let, let write it. Yeah. It's not much different. Okay. And even yes, 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 it's basically the same. Okay. okay, okay, okay yeah. you can do so what's, what do we have here? Like, first of all, we have the, we, as I said, it's not comfortable to use string, so let's use char array instead. It just makes things more convenient. Mm -hmm. Also, as Pavel said initially, he wrote a lot of competition in Java, so he know what methods has the Java string. I didn't write a lot of competition in Java, so I know what functions are in, Kot in Kotlin standard library. So I'm using index of first and index of last functions from Kotlin standard library instead, mm -hmm. but it's not much different. And so basically index of first returns us index of first when this condition is true. So it's index of first minus and index of last plus symbol. Ah, it's not. It's not. It, ah, it's not functions of strings. It's fun yes. they are functions of arrays. Yes, yes so it's a function. Array. I think it's function not on array, but on any index in on ah. any on anything iterable probably. Uh -huh. so, so you can do it on so almost seen, anything. Seen. Okay, it's on char array, but there is uh -huh. an uh -huh. overload on uh -huh. almost uh -huh. everything. So you basically, give it a predicate and it returns you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as as the Java function, they return minus one if they didn't found, which I. I would say a bit, uh, mm -hmm. like a bit, not the best way to do now, but everyone in Java world so used to it, so it's now would be changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we found both and minus is less, is less than plus, then we fix, fix it. And also we prepare our answer. So here we just prepare our answer. Mm -hmm. And here we just prepare our answer to do nothing which is really nice feature, uses really nice feature of Kotlin, and if expression is an expression, so you can put it to something. So, yes. so and you have like this if, which uh -huh. executes to either to this or to this, and you can just put it to variable, okay. very convenient way. So it's basically like a ternary operator, but yes. instead of ternary but operator... But why do you need ternary operator? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Why, why to have two things doing yeah. the same yeah, in the language? I agree. I agree. And this is basically this good function, Mm -hmm. which just trying to use okay. minimal balance okay. in a bit more complicated way, but it's shorter. And when you get used to these standard library functions, so what do we have here is a running fold function. Basically, it's returning the list of values of accumulated values. Mm -hmm. So initially we have zero, then we're processing each character. Mm -hmm. And for each character, no, uh, there is a question in chat whether first minus and last plus of size 
of type boolean no they are of type int and you can ah uh, okay sorry i am a bit mr keyboard can you please show like id can, can you can say you can always should go an id and it show its int i think you also can ret in, 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 can enable inlay hints then it would also show you a hint if you want and also you can do an a refactoring for that so can you okay, please I, do I, it i'm not sure which one I, I, Oh, so no, so uh, 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 it's fix up. It's not refactoring, but uh, uh, so comment enter, please. Uh, or comment of or option enter. I'm not sure. Yes. So you can specify type explicitly, which would just add int to you. Uh -huh. So if you are not sure on any type, you ID always can tell you. Uh, yeah, magic, magic. Okay. <laughs> and so what's happening here is this running fault function, which says that I am accumulating with previous value. I am adding one if it's plus and otherwise I'm adding minus one. Mm -hmm. And it just returns a list of all intermediate values. So if we go to its documentation, we can so yes, it would, yes, it would be, so as you see, it's array of size s plus one, uh -huh. size plus one uh -huh. which returns our operation. Basically, uh, we got like prefix sums. Thanks to Kotlin inline functions, no extra invoke callable things are allocated here. So it's just as fast as your loop. Mm -hmm. And then you were getting the minimal balance, mm -hmm. and that's all. So if it's less than zero, then it's bad. If it's more than zero, it's good. That's basically what what was checked by. Good. Okay, that's it was checked by. It's the same as it was checked by good function in Pavel's solution, and why inside it's looking for it equal to plus uh which one i think it's it's you checking for it equals to plus symbol not for minus sim symbol um okay i didn't got your question sorry please try to reformulate it uh so it's returning okay uh, okay i've got it so index of first is returning index of first position where this condition is true yeah. So index of first, it's equal to minus, find the first position where the symbol is equal to minus or the position of first minus we have. So if you forgot something about any function, the documentation is always here, right, right here in IDE, very convenient. Uh, probably this if can be a bit improved by, by, by using some, like by using nullability features. I think the I one. Just, so here I check if, if, my, if my thing is correct. So if balance is negative, then I return minus one. And if not, then okay. Yeah. How's so for example, I, I wouldn't say it's a big improvement. It's just a, a way, a, a bit different way of writing things like this. There is a really nice take if function in standard library, which returns either the value to the left or null if the condition is false. So it's a way of dropping the condition if something bad happens to it. Mm -hmm. And we can use this thing called Elvis operator, which is converts our, like if the left part is null, then use the right part. Otherwise just get the left part. I, how, 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 how can it work? So, so it's, 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 ans is string. Yes. So I have string, but sometimes I have integer. How it works, it's the different um, types. <laughs> okay, I would say that it's better to write this in this case. <laughs> uh, but it just creates a variable of type any, which is both string and integer. It's ah, fine. Ah, so it in the sense that printlin works yeah. with both strings yeah. and any. No, no, print, printlin actually works with any. Ah, printlin with any. But I agree that it's better to just <laughs> add a string here to avoid extra conversions and unexpected types. Yeah, that's a bit better. But actually, we had the same problem before where yeah. you have this if. Yes, so yes. nothing changed. I, I, I was going to ask you why it works, but it, yeah. yeah. Basically, that's I, I wouldn't say it's much different. I, that's a bit more idiomatic because it ch ch shows your intent. Like mm -hmm. you want to take ans if something is true mm -hmm. and otherwise fall back to, some, to something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's like a really minor improvement. Good, good. Okay. So, okay, it looks like we don't have more questions. So we probably can so let's go let's, to some let's more, move com to more complicated let's problems. Let's move to something more complicated. Let's go to, let's go problem, problem E. What do you want? E. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, so problem E looks like this. We have two integer arrays. We have arrays A and B of the same size. And we are allowed to swap elements of the same indices. So we have, like, basically, we have, like, let me show you. So, so we have two arrays of the same, two arrays of the same size. And we are allowed to swap elements with the same indices. So we have array A and array B. And what we're looking for, we're looking for the way to, to swap the indices in such a way that we maximize this, this strange sum. So F of C is just the sum of the max, maximal possible sum on the segment. So what we're basically doing, we swap some elements between arrays A and B. Then we pick some segment in array A, some segment here some segment in array B, calculate sum here, so sum of these elements, sum of these elements, and we maximize sum of these two segment sums. So again, we, okay, problem works like this. I have two arrays. I can swap the elements with the same indices. Then I take the segment with maximal sum in the first array, segment with maximal sum in the second array, and I want to maximize the total sum of of these two segment sums. Yeah. Yeah. So this that's that's what's written here basically. Uh, that's all. So so array is quite long, so it's there array is two two perfect. So I cannot so I, uh, I, I can iterate all possible segments of my array. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well you can, but you would receive time limits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Again, it, again, so maybe the first idea. So, so if you don't know this idea, so how, so how to solve how to solve this problem if you have only single array? So, if you have only single array, how to find the segment with maximal possible sounds? Uh, there are multiple ways to do it, I believe. So, so if you have a segment, so if all numbers are non-negative, it's not an issue. So, problem is that when you have negative numbers then you may have some segments with negative sums. Yeah? So, so when you have some array and you want to find a segment with maximal sum, there are two ways to do it, basically. Uh, the first way is you can go and maintain prefix sums. And for this prefix sum, you want to subtract this prefix sum. So you, you go from left to right and maintain prefix sums. And for, for each prefix sum, you want to find the prefix sum to the left with the minimal possible value. Yeah. So, so for all for all previous prefix sums, you find the minimal one. And you like go from left to right, calculate these prefix sums, then for every calculate the minimal prefix sums before and so on. So you can another way is the greedy algorithm. You, go, you can go from left to right and maintain the current segment. So you have the current segment, you try to add elements one by one. If this sum became negative, you just replace your whole segment with the empty segment. Uh, it's very very classical problem about like about the race and uh, segment sums. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Just 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 if if you don't know this, so this classical. But in, in this problem, you need to do it in, in both arrays, and and also you need to swap elements. Good. Yeah. Uh, so how to solve this problem? So I, I, I will explain my solution, then we'll try to compile. So because we talked about it before the, the stream and we have completely different solutions for this problem. So my solution works like this. So again, it's a little bit over, overly complicated, but again, I'll show you anyway. Uh, so what we do in, what we do in this solution? So I will go from left to right. So you have some segments. So you, you need to pick some segment here and some segment here. Uh, and basically for every segment, when you go from left to right, you have three stages. So like stages like zero, one, and two. So zero, when you're outside of the segment to the left, one is when you're inside the segment, and two, then you are to the right from the segment. And when you go from left to right, you have state zero, then state one, then state two. And it's the same for the second segment. Here you have state zero, here you have state one, here you have state two. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to go from left to right and maintain both states for, for, for the first segment. First. So here I have state 0 and 0. Then I go to this point, I have 1 and 0. Then I reach this point, I have 1 and 1 and so on. So, so every time I maintain state of the first uh, segment, state of the second segment. And then I have like nine possible pairs of these states. And then I just do dynamic programming over, over these nine states. So I go from left to right. 
and I, I try to calculate the optimal answer for all these nine possible pairs. Okay. Turns out to be overly overcomplicated solution, but again, let's, let, let's see how it looks in my way. Maybe you'll show me how to do it better. Uh, so what I'm doing here, so I maintain, so, so, so this is array for my dynamic programming. It's just two dimensional array three by three. So I maintain state of the first segment, state of the second segment. And here I do just normal dynamic programming. So here I try to uh, propagate each state to the next state. So I try to, so X is the state of the first segment. Y is the state of the second segment. I propagate from X to XX. XX is a new state for the first segment. Y, Y is no use to the second segment. I propagate these values here. Okay. okay. Now I calculate, the, so, so when, I, when I'm inside the segment, I add the value. If I'm inside only one of the segments, I add the maximum of these two values. If I'm inside the both of the segments, I add both maximum and minimum. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I know. It's like, I can agree that it's a bit overcomplicated for that problem. But but okay. Actually, by this time, I couldn't stand it. It could be too easy. Yeah, but, but okay. okay. When, when you start programming during the contest, you, you sometimes, need, yeah, yeah. Yeah. sometimes it's easy to finish. Yeah. You just start it. Okay. And, and, again. Uh, and again, you start. That's, all. That, okay. that, that's my solution. Like, first of all, what I see is basically you have some code copy pasted twice. I don't see any difference between this bunch of codes. I'm not sure actually why I'm doing it twice because I code here and here. Mm. Ah, it's, it's doing once in the end. So okay. after the last character, I so also need to propagate. For example, once. we can just add a function for that. Uh, and we can either just use extract function refactoring. Well, let's try. Let's it. try to do this. Let's try function. Extract function. Okay, it's like IDE failed to come up with the name, gate. Okay. but we can help help it. Process duplicates. And it's also fine that it's called actually yeah. here's one, one more. I'm not sure what magic did this. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, time complexity is not n to the 4. It's actually n multiplied by 3 to the 4. Yeah. 3, 3, to, 3 the four to the 4 is, is not too bad. 3 to the 4 is fine. n to the 4, not a big uh, yeah. When n is free, it's fine. Yes. Uh, and yep. also, if you don't want to create a top-level function, you can instead make a local function. Let's try to do this. So instead of going to this, you can just write a function inside your function. You can do functions in, in, inside uh, the function? Yes, you can just do this. So you can and also, basically, you don't need this D here, because it will just capture it, capture it right away. So you can just remove D from here. You don't ah, so need it, it. it can capture my local variables. Yeah, so it also captures your local variables, which is often quite handy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, another thing which can be done here is, again, like IDE shows us that probably you're doing something slightly wrong here. This is like this gray underlining, mm -hmm. which show that it's probably fine what you write, but there is a bit more idiomatic way of doing that. Using this, oh, this I don't know how to name it, op operator, which have this exclusive range operator, probably it's named. Mm. And also one you can do instead is the word until. until yes, I know. Yes. I, I, I know those, but, but I, again, again, I'm, to moving, be honest, I'm I, moving from C++ and Java. I, I'm not, I'm not scared. Yeah. Actually, C++ is always using open, open-ended ranges. Yes, yes but, but this word until okay. freaks yes. me out. Yeah. But, <laughs> so personally, I prefer until, but mm -hmm. also this open range operator mm -hmm. is also really nice. Mm -hmm. And if you mess something up, IDE conveniently shows you that this range is in inclusive and this is exclusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically, I don't think there is much more can be done here because it's actually what solution should do. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like this dynamic programming okay, stuff. Again, for, for this solution, it's fine, yes. A bit annoying, but... So, okay, can you explain your solution? Let's look okay. at the solution. I think we should go back to the whiteboard, yeah. to the whiteboard for that. Okay, here's the whiteboard for you. Oh, okay. Should, you, you want me to... Yeah, no, I, I, I can. Can you please explain because I'm not really familiar with okay. this oh. with this pen. <laughs> Okay, so so Pavel solution is very different from mine. So so what what was doing Pavel solutions? He, he he's actually uh, he's actually much smarter you... than me. Uh, so so what he's doing the solution? He uh, he sees that. Okay, uh, what... let, me, let me answer the question in chat. Okay. Uh, until and dot dot operator is almost the same thing, 
the only difference is until is exclusive the right end and dot dot is inclusive the right end. No okay. significance okay. difference here. Show them both. Yeah, so until makes it here you have less, here you have less, and see here you have less or equal. Yeah. Um, yes. So it's basically the same thing, just sometimes it's more convenient to have inclusive right right, right end, sometimes it's more convenient to have exclusive right end. Choose whatever convenient in your use case. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your solutions. Your solution works like this. So you, you look at, the, at these two segments and you see if these two segments do not intersect like this, then basically what you need to do, you need to pick two segments with maximum value. So, so you in both this segment, so when you when you when you allow to swap the elements, you just pick maximum of these two elements. So basically what you're doing, you're finding the two non-intersecting segments of maximums. So from from A, so from for every index you pick the maximum out of these two elements and then out of these maximums you find two non-intersecting segments with maximal sum and if you have two intersecting segments so if you have intersecting segments then you basically have situation like this so it's, let's let's have the, make them nested and prove this so what happened here so in in this region in this region in this region you pick both elements yeah from, from array A and B. It means you pick both minimum and maximum element. And for this range here and here, you pick only one element out of this. So you, again, you pick only maximum. So what you're doing, you pick all, all maximums in this range and both maximum and minimums in this range. So the, the, the answer is actually uh, the segment of maximums plus the segments of minimums. And, and that's all, that, that, that's only two cases you need to consider. So you need to consider two non-intersecting segments of maximums and segment of maximums plus segments of mi segment of minimums. Clear enough? Yes, well, basically there are some more cases you need to check for, to make a mm -hmm. formal proof. For example, if they are intersected but not inside each other, yes, but it can be shown that in all these cases, one of these two would be better because you can choose maximum in some positions yes, instead. Yeah, instead of, getting like the, or yeah, so instead of this, getting this plus you can this plus this yeah. and it would be just better. Mm -hmm. And if, if you choose the minimum segment which is not intersecting with maximum segments, you can just choo choose maximums on same positions and this would be better. So there are a couple other cases which are formally exist, but you don't need them because yeah, because they are just worse. This is usually sometimes how you solve the maxim maximization problem. You just think about the cases you need to consider there. Because so not all the possible, not, not all cases can be a maximal case. So, so when you just uh, decrease the number of, of cases you need to look at, that you, you just see. Yes, so and actually, these two problems are easy because for choosing maximum and minimum, we can just Let's find the maximum sub array soon. Uh, so, so, so I create max array of maximums, array of, uh, minimum array of maximums, and then I pick maximum of two cases. Either best in minimums, best one in minimum, and best, best one in maximum. Best maximum. Or, ah, what, or what, best of what is this two? two? It's how which maximum I get, mm. uh, and this I'm this, this I'm cheated a bit. Uh, okay. uh, formally, this can be done in lengths of lists multiplied by k time, but I know that k is no more than two. Okay. So I've just inlined everything and just have like four lines copy pasted because it's just faster to write this. Ah, <laughs> okay. So it's okay. just normal dynamic programming, like similar yeah. to mine actually, but okay, much, much easier because you have only two states, so you have only yeah. four values instead of nine. So here time complexity would be length of list multiplied by k, but as k is two, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Instead of doing that, you can have not these four lines copy pasted, but rather the some loop of length k. It would be not much more complicated, but that's just how I wrote this at this point. Mm -hmm. Instead, you can have the array of lengths 2k 2 and replace it with loop, but that should be quite trivial. And also, one thing we can make a mention here is you can have this zip function, which is quite handy sometimes to process two, two lists on the same positions. So basically the minimums is I just have the its rate over pairs of this A and B on the same position. 
and have this minimum and maximum, which is just like handy way, hand, a lot of uh, one of one more handy function we have in standard library. Like actually, I would say that standard library in Kotlin is much more useful than sometimes in C++ because it has a lot of these small functions which you need some time to get used to. So even even in competitive programming setup, because you need to start thinking in a bit different way, not of what you're trying to do to hide how to just write some loop and do the stuff, but what what is your intention? Because actually, when you do there, are, I would say the most handy ones are like are dot any and dot all, which is quite kind of trivial, but you always can make an error here, like making you need to think whether you need initial way of true or false, whether you need and or or and stuff like that, and it just works and just shows your intent, not some implementation details, and allows you to think on more important things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here is, I don't sure I have ideas what can be improved here, but probably one thing we can think about here is that sometimes you don't need, if you have come up with some solution, maybe you need to think a bit more whether you can mm -hmm. improve it to make it easier to write. But sometimes if you are sure in yourself enough, you can just do what you know and it also works. Yeah, and again, again, the goal of this competition is not to produce the best possible code, but to produce the code that solves the given problem in given time limit. So yeah. So if 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 your code solves the problem in a given time limit, you're fine. Yeah. One more? Okay. So do we have time for one problem? I think we have time for one more and should stop on that. Yes. Unfortunately, we lost some time um, or sound setup. That's hard. Which one will I put? I don't really <laughs> remember them. That was more than a year ago. Uh, you can. I we have pool records this. about people swimming in the pool. No, that's and we better. have some of the digits. I, I, I like. I the think so some of the like digits. Is a bit better. better. Uh, I like. I, I like this problem because it's it's it combines some mathematical uh, problem with some programming problem. So. so. Um, so what we have in this problem, we're talking about sum of digits. So, so digit sum is just, you take, they take the number in that decimal format and ca calculate sum of all digits of your number. And we're looking about this function. Uh, so what, we, what we're doing here, we, uh, we have an array. Uh, and for each number, we look at this function. This function. So, so we take the number from the array. Uh, sum of, with all numbers from the array one by one. And for each sum, we calculate this digit sum. So f is just the sum of digits. And then calculate sum of all these digit sums. And we need to calculate this sum for any, for, for every element of array A. So we pick, let me, let me, let me draw a picture again. So, 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 so you see what I'm, so, so you have an array. So you have an array. Boom, boom, boom. You pick one element, AI, uh, sum it with, with all elements of the array. Yeah. So you calculate all possible sums AI plus AJ. Then for this sum, you calculate so function F. Function F is just sum of digits. Mm -hmm. uh, and then calculate it for sum for all for all J. Mm -hmm. And you need to calculate this sum for A for every for, for all A. Mm -hmm. I just I just write the same thing, but <laughs> with, with, with simple picture. Uh, so that, that, that's the question. So I I, I like this. So, so you you can do it. You can you can, you can do it in n square time. You can you can. So if you just do it na 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 in a naive way, you pick a number, you calculate all these sums. Uh, then you have n square. So so it's easy to do it in n square time. So plus calculation of the digit sum. Calculation of the digit sum is easy. Um, so basically, you, you have n square. This m sums i j plus j. You can do it in n square time, but it will be too slow because n is up to uh, ten power five. So so it's it's too slow. So you need to find a faster way to calculate the sums. Yeah. So that's that's the problem. Okay. Hope it's clear enough. Uh, so uh, the way you solve this problem is okay, the first you need to some mathematic part. So so in the mathematic part you need to look at this function. What is the sum of digits of sum of two numbers? So if you look at sum of two numbers, let's see. Let's give some of so we'll say 638 plus something like 300. 
65. 65. Let's put one more. Something like this. <laughs> I don't know. So, so when you calculate sum, you have something like three, it's, it's three and one here. Uh, this is zero and one here, and zero and one here, if you have one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm looking at sum of, of these digits. Yeah. And the trick is that sum of the digits of the sum of two numbers is actually almost the same as sum of these two digits. So if, if I calculate sum of these digits, it will be 9 plus 8, it's 17, 18. Sum of digits here will be 9, 14, 16. 16. Why I started this? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> 4, 7. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. This elementary mass is always hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this sum actually uh, is very similar to just some of these numbers. It doesn't look like, but sometimes it's just equal to some of these numbers. For example, if you calculate numbers and you have something like 3, 2, Let's let's just small. <laughs> I will not make the same mistake. Uh, plus forty two, so it will be like seventy three. Yeah. So here the sum is four. Here the sum is six. Here the sum is ten. So this sum is basically equal sum of these two numbers. Yeah. But here it, it is smaller than sum of two numbers, and it is smaller because I have these carrying. So so every time I carry carry one to the left, this sum of this decreased by nine because this sum is ten. But I move this one here, so instead of 10, I have 1. So this sum 7 is actually equal to 18 plus 16 minus 9 multiplied by number of times I need to replace this 10 with 1. So it's like I have 10, so this 1 moves to the left. So instead of 10, I have 1. I decrease the sum by 9. By 9 multiplied by 3. Sounds correct. It's 36. 34 minus 27. Oops, it sounds like okay. <laughs> okay, so the formula is fine. Uh, yes, so, so this, is, this is how you calculate uh, this sum of digits for sum of two numbers faster than just calculating. So, so I, what I will do, I will calculate, first of all, I will calculate sum of digits for every number. Then, so, okay, so, so this function f will be something like this. So, so it will be f of ai plus f of aj minus 9 multiplied by number of these bits of like so, uh, let's see c of a i and i a j so it's number of times i have this carrying one to the left yeah so i i pre-calculated i will pre-calculate these values before i can do it in linear time so for, for just for every number i will calculate some of digits and then i i need to take care of these elements. and to take care of these elements i will find for every position how many times I have this, uh, I have this sum more than 10 in this position. Okay, hope it's clear enough. <laughs> it's hard problem, it's problem, problem H, it's one of the last problem from the course. Okay, I think we're a bit running out of time, so I'd suggest to check my solution in, from stretch. What do you think about uh, that? Problem H, problem H? Is yeah. Okay. So I suggest to check. Like, okay. We, 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 okay, we, okay, we can check both. We, we, we tried it, so they are very similar. I, I'll, I'll show my, my solution, so what I'm doing, so it's, it's, your, your solution is very similar to mine. Uh, so uh, here I pre-calculated the, for each number, the number modular power of 10. So for each number, what I want to do, I want to see if I have, excuse me, so, so to see if I have this current bit here, I need to check if this number plus this number exceeds 100. So if this sum is greater than, is, is 100 or, or greater, then I have this result. So I need to find these suffixes for every number and then find the suffixes that overflow like o, 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 over this uh, power of 10. Yeah. So what I'm doing here, I find the suffixes for each number, basically. Uh, sort them. Yeah. And then here, when I want to find the number of times I overflow this power of 10, and I, I find in this sorted array here, use, using binary search, I, I find the number of times I, I overflow. Okay, very, very, very brief explanation of what's going on here. Again, hope it's clear enough, probably not, but again, we're running out of time. So I will try to be, I'll try to be as fast as So here I calculate digit sum for every number, like, 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 so, so. and here, here I do all these tricks. So I, for, for, for every position, I try to find the number of times I have this carrying bit using binary search over these suffixes.
Like, okay, <laughs> let's look at your solution. So okay. you're, you're doing basically the same, but it fits in a single in a single screen. So let's <laughs> okay, let's just cut this one. Like first of all, we have this digit sum function, which is not a performance pro performance critical part of our code. So the best the rule of thumb is like if you have some part which is not performance critical, you should write it as clear as possible, and if you have some part which is performance critical, you should write it as fast as possible. This is not performance critical part, so I just convert it to char to list to array of chars and having the sum, and they just don't care. This would allocate something twice. Who cares? I would do I do it linear number of times, but it's much clearer, much much faster to write, much yeah, smaller. So it's, it's not, it's not it's, like it can be proved if needed, mm -hmm. just to replace with some loop. It would be faster, but that's not performance critical part of solution, so no one cares. Uh, about this, we'll take a bit later. So what do we have here? We're just having a list of power of tens, which is can be created by this handy build list function, which just make, creates your mutable list, which you can create in whatever way you want. Uh, what so you, what do you think? Ah, you... I'm adding one, uh -huh. then I'm adding nine times adding so, the previous value multiplied by 10. Okay, so this add, I, I'm this, removing this one because I don't need it. So this add just... Uh -huh. add so, this so you to, add it to, to your current yeah, list. So, you I, have a list so what I have okay. here is you have this implicit this of type mutable list. Uh -huh. I told you mutable. Yes. Okay. And the handy thing is it's not actually mutable outside of this scope. So outside of the scope is just list. So you have okay. created the mutable list, mutated in in the ways you want, okay. and have the normal list, which no one would change more. Okay. And also, the ID show that this int is not necessary. Then mm -hmm. you can just write build list, and as you're adding ones, zeros, uh, okay. Actually, <laughs> actually, it is necessary, but <laughs> whatever. It's fun. Um, that happens sometimes. No. It shows, it shows, it shows. No, it shows it's redundant, but if you remove it, then it breaks here. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. No, ah, no it, it breaks here. Okay, this happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, actually, understanding that something is redundant is complex. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's very hard to understand when you can when you can, okay. when you can find the type of. So, what do we do next? We just have this power of tens list, mm -hmm. and for each of them, we have a list of suffixes, same as in Pavel's solution, mm -hmm. and we can see that this is a list of lists, which is can be created by this handy map functions, and so ah, it's a list, ah. yeah, list of the list. So ah, each... you make map, and then you make a yeah. map. Aha, you make map, okay. Okay, and what so do we need more? We need these digits. And, and then you sort them in the same, in the same line, okay. okay. Yeah, that's a bit... So you take all the numbers, take all, all the remaining power, and then, power of 10 and then sort them. Yeah. In a single line. Cool. Yeah, okay. like cool. chaining, cool. chaining cool. this yep, yep. handy yeah, function I get it. I get it. is very useful also. And what we do next is, that's probably thing you should not do in one line. I, I would say that you should, ex that I probably should extract it from this print loop. And actually we can do this by our ID refactoring. Oh, I got to go what's happening. We can just create a variable answer right now. Okay. Um, and so for each A, the answer is sum of all digits plus N multiplied by sum of these digits minus nine multiplied by this, by, by, by this binary search, which is almost the same what, what is done uh, okay uh, almost the same which is done by Pavel. So which so so what we have here is this lower bound function which is defined here and the bit oh, okay and, again, and, and you have n minus because because you have ah, okay. so what does this you lower want, you bound function you want you want array to be to, to be sorted increase okay so you need to okay fine number like here okay got it Okay, so what's happening here is we have this function which create which finds the num the, the index of first element we, for which is greater than this value. Mm -hmm. And so number of elements greater than it is length of array minus this index. And so basically this, the same as C plus yes, right? 
so it's like the same way as it happens in C++. So if you have you know, the C++ lower bound functions, it's okay. approximately the same. Okay. And actually, this can be done not by not writing the binary search yourself. You can use binary search from, from standard library. Unfortunately, its, ret its return value is a bit strange. So binary search, uh, like compared to, for example, C++ version, does not take the condition what is less, but rather have the same thing, but rather gets the same comparators like compare two function in Java, which returns minus once if it's less, zero if it's equals, and one if it's more. Uh -huh. So what can I do here is I'm saying that everything that is less than x is less, and everything else is more. So it would find the first value, the it would find the position where to insert the value x. Uh, unfortunately, this condition is a bit untrivial. If we show the the documentation about about this binary search function, its returns value is a bit is a bit sophisticated. But what it says that if it contains the list, uh, then we return the position, and otherwise, which is our case, because we never return zero, the, it would be inverted insertion point. Mm -hmm. So this inversion can be done by binary inversion function, or you can replace this with minus it minus one, whatever you wish. That's a bit sophisticated, like that's a bit, how to say it, tricky way of doing that, yeah. but, 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 but again, again this, this binary search is just normal yeah, so Java can, binary search. The, mm, I, you can check. You can always check. Okay, so, but, but, so, boom, boom, boom. No, it's just you. No, it's same, but it's like it has the same contract like arrays.binary search in Java. Okay, why? why, why? Probably re implement it in standard library. Why didn't you implement normal binary search? I, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. I think being consistent is more important than being. That's true. That's true. Yes, yeah, true. It's hard to break it. So if when people get used to them, the way how binary search works, it's very yeah, it's hard to. Hard to change it. Uh, do we stop here? I think we can like do we have here. any more questions? We have more questions. Okay, if you have any more questions, you can ask them now. Have, like a couple okay. of more minutes when we are asking. I believe uh, it's up. So, so, so we discussed. Okay, we didn't discuss all, all the problems. We discussed some easy problems, some hard problems. So the last problem was one of one of the hardest problems from this contest. Okay. Uh, do we know when we will have the next round? Okay, uh, we plan to have next round soon. We don't have exact dates yet. I expect it to be in the end of spring or in the beginning of summer. Mm -hmm. I don't know exact dates yet, unfortunately, but you can expect it end of May, beginning of June, somewhere like that. Uh, also, for those who are looking for the Kotlin language, not in competitive programming, but as just a not as just a general purpose language today there was a 2.0 rc released also also please check every check blog posts about that there are a lot of interesting things you need to try and report as soon as possible if, if it's if it's break something for, for you uh, so if no one has more question we will finish soon good sorry, sorry i hope to see you in the next Kotlin hero rounds. Um, yeah, you, 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 can, you, you, you the, 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 I believe it's the the coolest thing. You can win a cool T-shirt. I, I don't wear it today, but yes, I have T-shirts from all previous rounds, and they're very nice T-shirts. Yeah, so it's one of one of the <laughs> one of the main reasons why you take part in the programming competition is to win a cool T-shirt. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, I think we finish here. Okay, thank you everyone for watching us today. See you next time.